Today we will take a closer look at one of the famous 12 principles of animation, follow through and overlapping action. This one is well known for cloth or tails that are dragged behind a character, but let me show you how it goes way beyond that and how it's highly important for everything that you animate. There are three terms that are essential for this principle. Drag, follow through action and overlapping action. Cloth or floppy ears and tails provide the most obvious examples for drag and follow through. In these cases there is a solid object performing a main action with loose soft parts attached. The cloth here does not actively create motion energy on its own. All of the energy comes from the solid ball part. The loose parts only react. At first it's dragged, it can only keep up with the delay, but when the main action stops, it's still full of energy that gets spent in a follow through action. It overshoots, the parent object now becomes a counterforce and then settles down. It's pretty similar to how a pendulum would move. Even parts that are sticking up against gravity settle with a pendulum ease. You would probably try to get the main object parts done first and then later add the floppy parts in a separate pass. With a little bit of practice these parts can even be done intuitively straight ahead. It's probably a good idea to do a rough pass first before you draw or keyframe the details. If you ever need reference and inspiration, real life cloth and dangling stuff is never far away. Always keep your eyes open and try different things, you might find surprising stuff. Earrings for example swing for a really long time. Centrifugal force lifts up anything attached to a rotating element. An up and down motion can cause left and right swings. Of course, you can and should always take artistic liberty, exaggerate or shorten. Whatever looks right is good enough. Oh, and if a loose part isn't cloth, but a part that a being can deliberately move, you could always sprinkle in some little active secondary action like these little tail wiggles in the beginning and the end for that extra sprinkle of life. Now, as I already mentioned, this principle is far more essential than just for adding those loose parts as an afterthought. You must understand that you need drag, follow through and overlapping action constantly in almost every animation because they occur whenever elements are chained together. Look at this arm motion, it's super stiff because we have none of those principles applied yet. Now let's add some drag. The upper arm is dragging the lower arm, which is dragging the hand. Doing this gives us this nice little curve. And as you might know from the arc principle, curves are your friend. Now everything keeps following its next part in the chain until the upper arm stops moving. The lower arm still has some energy left, so it goes on a little further before it stops too, which leaves the hand to do the last follow through in the chain. In this case the settlement of course is a lot more subtle than in cloth. There might only be a little or no overshoot but it's still the same principle. This is why drag and follow through are so very important. In every motion of the arms and legs, even in the spine, you have separate elements that come to a successive stop. And we almost forgot the final one of this trio of rules, overlapping action. Different parts of the body move and settle at different speeds. So the motion of an arm might still be going on when the body already came to a stop. This happens for example when the body is the parent in the chain and the energy continue to flow into the arms. Or you could also make one arm stop before another just because it breaks the evenness and looks better. And to spice things up even more, one element could settle with an ease and another one with an overshoot. To make things even more complicated, what parts lead and what parts follow can change within the same action. 
even in a matter of frames. Watch this. The shoulder initiates the arm motion, the elbow takes the lead, and then the wrist takes over. Every element was leading in one moment and then following in the next. Also note how the different body parts come to a halt at different times. The leg, for example, has to catch the body pretty early on to prevent our scribbly guy from falling backwards. So often it's the balance that dictates this order. You can also use it to direct the view onto the last moving element. Or you just do what looks best. Most points mentioned here are about pure body mechanics. Keep in mind that these are essential for making your character's motions feel physically believable. But physically believable does not equal a good performance. Acting choices, character motivations and emotions should always be the main driving factors of your animation. Principles like overlapping and follow through only assist you in bringing a realistic mass to your character. Master this and you can make your audience feel the weight and gravity of a world that does not really exist. Did I forget to mention anything? Do you have some tips and tricks about overlapping and follow through? Was the video helpful? Let us know in the comments below or leave a like. Click here for two more videos filled with animation knowledge and please share and subscribe.